Mary Ann Cooper has been studying the injuries of lightning survivors for 25 years, but in her role as an A&E doctor, she treats another group of victims of high voltage electricity, victims of industrial electrocution. They receive similar amounts of electricity, but have very different injuries. The effects of high voltage electrical injury as opposed to lightning injury are fairly different. For one thing, with high voltage electrical injury, you see incredible deep burns, cooked muscle tissue, major amputations. With lightning, the burns tend to be quite superficial and quite minor compared to the other things that we see. More Could the clue to Michael's survival lie in the difference between these two types of injuries? There are several factors that make lightning injury far, far different than high voltage industrial accidents. Probably the one that's most important is the time that lightning is actually around a person, which may be only a few thousandths of a second. I will, I'd much rather be a lightning victim. The lightning victim doesn't have the problems that the electrical shock victim has. And I think it has to do with duration. A few thousandths of a second is almost inconceivable. Maybe this is the reason why lightning can do so little visible damage. To test this theory, take one melon, zap it with the current of a lightning bolt for one millisecond. If the theory is correct, the melon should remain unscathed. While a millisecond sounds like a very little bit of time, we're talking 10 million volts through the body in a millisecond. And that's a lot of electricity, a lot of little electrons flowing through the body. The physical effects are dramatic. If the lightning current turns this melon into a fruit smoothie in just one millisecond, there has to be something more than duration to explain why Michael survived. Here's something five times hotter than the sun, a couple hundred thousand amps and millions of volts, and it blows buildings apart. It's a huge, huge phenomenon. How did I survive? The theories of doctors, the experiences of other lightning survivors, and the experiments in lightning labs have all left Michael baffled. It's time to turn to physics. The resistance of human body is about 700 ohm. So Professor Vladimir Rakov works with formulas. The current splits inversely proportional to resistance. He has accurately measured lightning voltage and current. D and then the parenthesis D. Values for resistance and conductivity and can work out how lightning travels when it hits a human body. Uh, lightning usually terminates on the highest point of the human body, which is the head. And the results of his calculations are rather surprising and can all be summed up in a single word, flashover. Potential difference will be high enough to produce a flashover, what is called flashover, that's an electrical arc. Most of the current will switch to the arc and as a result, human body receives only a fraction of the total lightning current. In simple terms, the flashover effect means when lightning strikes a person, only a proportion of the electric current actually travels through their body. Put another way... If I was going to explain it to a grade school child, for instance, what I'd say is it's like this tremendous amount of water or energy coming down, and like a shower, it hits the person, and it flashes over and redistributes around them rather than going through them like a bullet would, for instance. But what are the figures? By how much does flashover reduce the current through the body? This uh, flashover will protect you from the total lightning current. As current rises, it can only rise up to 1,000 amps or so for a few microseconds duration, after which current will prefer to follow this path primarily. Only a small fraction of the total current will continue flowing through the body, and that current level is of the order of five amperes. So the flashover phenomenon means that 99% of lightning's current flashes over the body, leaving just five amps to flow through the body. What kind of difference would that make when applied to another melon? If this flashover effect is the reason that Michael survived, this time the melon will remain intact. There you go, not a mark on it.
But a melon can only hint at the relative effects of current on a human body. It is, after all, only a melon. What kind of impact would five amps have on a human? Flow of a human body. However, that fraction is still sufficient in many cases to kill a human being. It seems flashover alone is not enough to explain survival. What else should be considered from the day our survivors were struck? I remember the rain. It was a big storm that day. The rain on that day was, was the heaviest I've ever come across. It was just incessant. It was just non-stop bouncing off the deck. Maybe the rain needs to be considered. Could it affect the level of flashover? If the person is wet, perhaps the flashover is different with them. Perhaps the way the energy is conducted around them is different. Perhaps the wetness actually is protective in some way. 